What's going on? Jake here with Uncommon EDC. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Rivery Manufacturing Zero. And this is an out the front automatic utility blade made in the USA that I purchased at CCKS. Now if you watch my CCKS video, you'll know this started with a raw aluminum body. I actually added the flex turn goon tape to the thumb slot as well as the back just to make it a little bit more grippy and easier to manipulate. And honestly, it worked like a charm. Now the reason it was somewhat slippery and clumsy in the first place is the finish that I chose. This is the smooth operator finish currently sold out, but this smooth operator finish is exactly what it sounds like, just smooth aluminum. The only sort of grippiness that they added to it is this thumb slot, and even that was a little bit slippery for my taste. I dropped this a couple times fidgeting with it, but every other finish they offer is textured. There's things like frag pattern and wave pattern, other kind of popular patterns that we see on knife handles, and all of those are incredibly grippy and easy to manipulate without any sort of secondary product like I added here. And so I would recommend going that route, honestly. I just like the way this one looked better. I knew it was more slippery when I picked it up, and so it kind of took a gamble that the goon tape would work, and fortunately, it worked extremely well, and I think it also looks great. It almost looks like I have a fleck turn inlay on this, which is really cool. And that's despite my sloppy application. I spent maybe two minutes adding the tape and cutting off the edges. I will probably remove this, reapply it, and spend maybe 10 minutes just more meticulously cutting around the edges to get a cleaner cutout. But overall, I think it looks great. I'm really happy with it. I just kind of wanted to prove out the concept, so I slapped that on there very quickly. Now, the different finishes are all $70, the textured or the smooth operator. Again, the smooth operator is currently sold out. Maybe they'll restock it, I'm not sure. Or maybe they found that it was too slippery and prefer those textured versions as well. But either way, I'll link to it down in the description of the video if you're interested in picking it up. No affiliation with them or anything like that. Now, in terms of sizing on this, it's around the size <clears throat> of a mini Bic lighter, maybe slightly bulkier, but we're looking at 2.7 inches long, about 1.18 inches in width, and pretty much exactly half an inch in thickness. The aluminum body keeps it pretty lightweight as well at only 2.07 ounces. And we also have a lanyard hole here on the back that I'm not currently taking advantage of, but I'm almost certainly going to add a lanyard at some point because I think even without the goon tape, that would make it grippy enough where you can kind of hold on with your pinky. No, you're not gonna throw it across the room and manipulate it a little bit easier with that lanyard in place. And so gonna add that in the future, but really nice that it's there and I like the placement quite a bit. It's kind of unintrusive and out of the way. Now, being an out the front automatic utility blade, it's a super ingenuitive design, but also deceptively simple. There's only seven parts to this entire knife in total. Two of those are the body, one of them is the utility blade, which is a standard utility blade that you can get at any big box store. And so that's really nice. And the other four are the ones that control the mechanism. So there's only four parts in total controlling that mechanism. And we'll take a look at that once we get it opened up, but super simple and surprising that it hasn't already been done to be honest, but really, really cool. These are also made in the USA. I don't know if I mentioned that. And so $70 for a utility blade. We did go over this in all of the utility blade videos. Obviously it's a luxury. You don't need to play that, pay that much for a utility blade holder, but this one has a really cool mechanism. It's made in the USA, you're sporting small business. And so I don't have a problem paying that price point. I know some people do and that's perfectly fine, but I do think this is incredibly cool. Now, in terms of the deployment, um, before we take it apart, it, you don't need any tools to disassemble it or change the blade, which is really nice. But before we do that, just kind of wanted to show that action without my thumb in the way in the thumb slot. So we're pushing on this drawer. Once it gets up there, if you're tilted upwards, gravity will just drop it back. If you're at the side angle like we are now, you just kind of pull it back. And so there's no spring or anything controlling this portion of the mechanism. So you do need gravity to do its part or just manually pull it back, which is what I normally do. Now in terms of retracting it, we're just gonna pull this back. And as soon as we get maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe even less than that, it's going to automatically retract that blade. And so it's more of an automatic retraction than deployment. The deployment, you're manually pushing the tray out and then pulling this back and setting it into place. So that's a little bit more manual, but I think it's probably still considered an automatic. We'll do that one more time from the backside so you can see it pushes out the blade sitting here. A lot of oil on it because I disassembled it and dried it all up, so I re-oiled everything. But once we pull that back, it's going to retract it. And so super simple mechanism overall. In terms of deploying that, or changing that blade. So we're gonna to wanna to deploy this. We're going to want to hold on to this, make sure you're not in that cutting path. 
pull this back, then push it forward, and we can slide that all the way off. Couldn't be more simple. Here's what the back of that looks like. And then in order to change the blade, I learned this the hard way because I never read instructions or watch instructional videos. They explain it very well in their video. So check that out if you have one of these and you're changing the blade. But you wanna make sure you're holding on to the tray here before you remove that blade because all otherwise the other four parts all spring out of there very, very quickly and you end up having to reassemble it, which is also a pain if you don't watch the instructional video, but very easy to do once you do. And so when we look in here now, you can see we have this red tray and there's a pin through it that kind of slides on that track that allows you to hold that door in place. That's why we have to kind of hold the blade in place when we retract that so we can lift that pin up and then push it back. And so then over here we have two additional parts. And so I may have miscounted that actually. So there's five parts in here, eight parts in total, but we have a spring on the side and then this, what they're calling a key. And that key holds it open. And then when we retract it, it pushes the key back in, pulls it closed. There's a spring behind the tray controlling everything. In order to change it, we have two magnets that aren't removable. So I'm not counting those as separate parts, but I guess in total that brings us to 10 parts. And so we just drop that back into place. You can see it is slotted. So you want to line it up with those two slots. And when you do, you can just slide this back on overall. I see a bunch of oil on the table as well. And so you just slide this on, making sure that you're not going to poke your finger. Once you do, pull it. Couldn't be easier to manipulate overall. Super easy to do and just a super smart mechanism. Now there is a little bit of play on that blade because it's not a screw down construction. That's one of the kind of downsides of having quick change assemblies. A lot of the times with the ones that require tools, that blade's not going to have play. This has a little bit of play. Now, you also don't have a ton of the razor blade exposed, so this is definitely one of those where you can turn the blade around, use the other side, because you only get about half an inch of blade in total, bringing the total overall length when it's open to about 3.2 inches. This was a super cool pickup. I may grab more of these. I think they're super fun. I really enjoyed this mechanism quite a bit. Love the way this turned out with the goon tape, but we'll probably grab one of the textured versions in the future as well. Let me know what you think of this one though down in the comments below. As usual, if you enjoyed the video, consider liking, commenting, subscribing, joining the channel as a member, or checking out some of my other videos. They all help the channel out a ton, and I hope you have a great one. Take care.